MULN has some bullish signs that were recently discussed on social media platforms pointing towards good growth. So should you buy the stock? Stay focused as we go through the list along with recent news as well as my chart analysis and price prediction. But before we do that, subscribe to our channel Stocks 101 for regular stock market updates. Some investors have photographed about 100 ELMS vans parked at the factory, which now Mullen owns, and these vans, if sold at the price of $30,000 each, can bring a revenue of $3 million free of production cost. Next up, data suggests that only 8 institutions are shorting MULN and spreading fear, whereas 170 corporations have a buy position. The Hindenburg report had lit this fire, which now seems to be cooling off as we go into 2023's first quarter. Also, two new employees have been hired recently for the Tunica factory as David continues working amidst all the hate and controversy. With all that in mind, let's analyze the charts. So as you guys can see right here now in the one day chart for MULN, and as always, we'll first analyze the one day chart, then the one hour chart, and to end it off, we'll get the five minute chart. But right off the bat, we can see that the stock is currently trading at a pre-market price of 18.11 cents, which is down 4.33% from yesterday's closing price of 18.93 um, cents. And of course, this is bad news, right? But why did this happen? Well, we'll analyze that today. And at the same time, you know, first we have to take a look at the overall trend, right? All of us know that the overall trend is bearish. So this pullback is nothing to really be surprised about. And now that you can see this, we're up a bit to the 3.59% in the reds. But at the same time, you know, why did this happen? First up, of course, we do know that Mullen has been constantly attacked by short sellers, right? But that, again, is not the main reason, right? The main reason still continues to be, well, in my opinion, it continues to be the fog around the fact that you know, whether ELMS or why did I say ELMS, whether the IGO vehicles will be delivered on 20th or not, right? A, you know, a lot of short sellers are kind of promoting this, that it won't be delivered. And even in my comments, right, I, I'm pretty sure that I got a lot of comments on my last video about MULN, that the company is a scam, it's this, it's that, which of course I don't believe in, right? Now, there are two sides in my comments section. The first one, Right, they say that I get paid by short sellers to spread fur about the stock, which I never did. Right, and at the same time, I have another side that says, hey, you get paid by the scam company to promote their dilution thing. Well, I really don't know what to say about that. But anyways, I would love to get paid by the company to promote their stock, right? So if David Mishri is hearing this, hey, hit me up, right? That's not a problem. But at the same time, you know, coming back to the serious talk, that was just jokes. Right. If David Mishri is watching this, do not contact me. But anyways, coming back to this main topic, we can see that, of course, the pre-market movement is negative. Right. But why did that happen? I already told you one reason. Right. There is a lot of misunderstanding. There is a lot of I would say that there is a lack of transparency in the way that Mullen is currently dealing. At the same time, you know, I think that, you know, this is, again, my personal opinion. But I think that all of this over here was caused mainly by FUD right it was mainly caused by fear of course around here when the stock fell below the 26 cent range again i you know even in my own videos comment sections i've seen comments like hey you know they certain um they suddenly turned into hate comments right they suddenly turned from hey i love marlin to hey this is a scam company right which seems kind of odd and suspicious to me right i personally wouldn't go straight from calling a company you know a good company to a scam in like a few days right that's not how it works at the same time i do believe that a lot of people don't understand what goes on in the market right and that of course does not mean that i'm justifying david mishri's actions or man's fall in any way and all i'm saying is that you know both parties have valid points and they need to be considered before investing right so you need to understand that any company is not something that you deal with emotionally, right? You should never deal with your trades emotionally. All you need to do is, you know, kind of figure out whether this thing that I'm going to invest in is going to give me good returns or not. It's really that simple. At the same time, Mullen, if you ask me whether I'm still talking about the stock, well, I personally believe that it might be a good opportunity for those who want to, you know, take something like a take it or leave it stock, right? What does that mean? Well, 
basically a stock where they don't have to put in a stop loss and basically they're like hey you know i'm gonna put let's say there's an example right there's a guy named john he puts in 500 dollars he's like hey i don't care if i lose my 500 dollars right but if the stock goes up 10x i'll have 5000 dollars right so that 500 dollars itself is his stop loss and you know anything that he gains of course is his profit so this is what i believe that you know mullen investors have in their mind while investing but of course there are some people who genuinely love the company and the concept at the same time you know there are questions that interest me but you know i would say that they come under the entire fudding part but at the same time they do make sense sometimes as well like if you know we discussed this like a few videos ago i believe that if mullen has great vehicles why don't they have a you know a good funding they could have easily gone big companies venture capitals even jeff bezos to back them with you know what they claim to have at the same time you know david continues to kind of i wouldn't say that he continues to erase those problems or erase those blames because again you know with dilution and the fact that he's receiving shares and he gifting them again right that's still a you know kind of a gray zone but at the same time the fact that the elms deal of course got closed and as i already told you in the previous part of this video that we might expect um three million dollars in revenue and as i already told you in my previous video right yesterday's video that once we start hitting good revenue goals every single month then the company might be able to actually go ahead and skyrocket but with that i believe we've done enough talking over the one day chart so let's jump on into the one hour chart and now that we're in the one hour chart we can see that right here on 6th december right of course we're gonna analyze 6th december first up open the day up great selling volume i mean i'm not supposed to say great selling volume right of course it's bad that we got so much selling volume right but it's a huge amount of selling volume after that of course the volumes continue to decline as of course the market time passed away. now if we were to analyze the candlestick patterns first up we can see that we got somewhat of an inside candle over here right and you know kind of follow up of a massive red candle right how many percentage you know the versus this let's see about 2.2 percent in a one hour candle pretty good or well pretty bad in this sense right so after that of course we got a pin bar on the negative side which did not work it got invalidated by another you know kind of green candle after that but i can see that after this inside candle that we got increased selling pressure was kind of obvious right so of course if we look at the current price right we're down 3.54 percent on the pre-market but at the same time you know i won't comment on the pre-market before we move on into the five minute chart so we can see the extended trading hours themselves and now that we're in the five minute chart of course we can see the extended trading session over here right we did get a gap down straight up after that of course we went down continued a bearish trend almost you know flipped things over but we failed over here we kind of touched the bottom around 18.10 cents right we did go up a bit so we tried to invalidate the trend but of course we failed right volumes not that great but i personally wouldn't trust the volume indicator on the pre-market after that of course if you ask me what's gonna happen today in my opinion the stock will of course get a gap down right like we're getting right now oh well that changed the game a bit but never mind we probably will get another pullback after this right i believe that we'll probably start the day below the 18.5 cent range after that you know if we continue to get pullbacks we might be able to break this and go up but in my opinion that probably won't happen because well we still don't have all of that great news right so i believe the stock might go down further giving better opportunity for buyers and at the same time you know i already told you that with the 20 december deal date that was announced or rather expected if mullen can actually deliver the 500 igo vehicle on um what do you call it 20th december then things might change up a bit right how will they change up in my opinion kind of first up of course getting sales right once we get sales things will automatically change right investors will put more trust into the stock right and probably big funds will approach mullen as well to buy some stakes into the company 
And after that, of course, the big day or rather the big time frame to watch would be the first quarter of 2023 when it's expected that we'll get the ELMS um, class one commercial vehicle, which is a van, which will be priced around 30 to 35 thousand dollars, which of course is good for the American markets, right? But we'll still have to kind of look out for that and see if it actually happens or not, right? I'm not saying that it will happen. I'm not saying that it will not happen. Right, you have to decide that for yourself. At the same time, remember that this most definitely was not financial advice and you should always do your own research before you trade. If however you enjoyed my analysis, be sure to hit the like button. If you did not enjoy it, be sure to hit the dislike button. You can subscribe to our channel, Stocks 101, for more such videos. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.